future mommies, if you click this video, you must be around 10 weeks pregnant. In this video, we're going to be talking about a few common symptoms that you might be feeling, what to expect at your next OB appointment, including genetic testing that your doctor might offer, and how your baby is developing. But first, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant specializing in women's health and gynecology. I'm a mommy to three, and like you, I have one on the way. You are watching In the Pink, and if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirits. So if you like being healthy and happy, click subscribe because you're in the right place. your first time on my channel, congratulations on your pregnancy. After you watch this video, I recommend that you go check out some of my earlier pregnancy videos. I started at week four and cover many different topics throughout this series that may be helpful for you. But for now, let's dive into week 10. So at week 10, you are halfway through your third month and you have 30 more weeks to go. You were also at the tail end of your first trimester and you are doing great. Another way to look at this Considering that a pregnancy is 40 weeks and you are 10 weeks along, you're already one fourth of the way through your pregnancy. At 10 weeks, your baby is about one and a half inches long and about the size of a date. At this point, all her major body organs have begun to form. She's developing teeth inside her gums, bones and cartilage are starting to develop as well. And she's also developing elbow and knee joints. The stomach is starting to produce stomach acids, the kidneys are starting to function, and even starting to produce a little bit of urine. Her fingers and toes are getting longer and the webs are going away. She's developing eyelids and can close them. Also, technically, your baby is no longer called an embryo. She's now advanced to what's called a fetus. Medical jargon for most because as far as you and I are concerned, in your tummy is your precious little baby. So there are some common first trimester symptoms that many of us have to deal with. You're probably exhausted from the second you wake up to the second you go to bed, and that's normal in the first trimester, but usually goes away by the second trimester, so you're almost through with it. In the meantime, if you need a nap, seriously, take it. You are making a human being. That's serious business and deserves all the rest you need. Go to bed earlier and sleep in. Mm-hmm, yep, I said it. Hit the snooze button like three times if you need it. Unfortunately, you might notice some heartburn. Your body is producing a lot of hormones for your pregnancy. Two of these are called relaxin and progesterone. One of the functions of these hormones is to relax all the smooth muscle throughout your body, including the smooth muscle in your gastrointestinal tract. So like the esophagus, which is the tube that goes from your mouth to your stomach, and also your small and large intestines. When the smooth muscles are relaxed, food moves more slowly throughout your digestive system. This might cause you to have indigestion and gas. There is a smooth muscle ring around the bottom of the esophagus, and this ring there helps to keep stomach acids where they belong, in the stomach. But when that muscle relaxes, thanks to the progesterone and relaxin, some of those strong acids make their way back up into the esophagus, causing heartburn. Now obviously, burning in the stomach or the upper chest is the obvious symptom, but there are other symptoms of heartburn that don't seem so obvious, like a sour taste in your mouth, bad breath, sore throat, and even a mild irritating cough can all be from reflux in the esophagus or from heartburn. So let's talk about this a little bit. First, to prevent heartburn, avoid laying down right after you eat. Laying down allows all those stomach acids to creep into your esophagus more easily. If you can, wait a few hours after you have dinner before going to bed. Avoid spicy or greasy foods and try eating smaller but more frequent meals. When you feel symptoms of heartburn, there are a few easy ways that you can help without taking medication. My personal favorite is drinking ginger lemon tea. The ginger acts as an anti-inflammatory and the combination helps take up the edge off of the heartburn. As an added bonus, it also helps with morning sickness as well. You can try drinking milk to help alleviate the symptoms or you can try sugarless gum about a half an hour after a meal. Sugarless gum helps increase saliva production which can help neutralize excessive acid in the stomach. You could also try eating a few almonds after each meal. These nuts can help neutralize those stomach acids too. Now if none of this helps you, you can try taking over-the-counter Tums or Rolaids. They're both considered safe during pregnancy and the calcium is good for you too. There are over-the-counter medications that are safe during pregnancy as well like Prilosec or Pepsid, but I do recommend that you talk to your OB before trying any of those. So I love the 10 week ultrasound. I call it the cinnamon bear stage and it's one of my favorite times that you can get an ultrasound. You can clearly see the arms and the legs. The head is about a half of the length of the body. Your uterus is now the size of a grapefruit. And while this is not noticeable to other people, you are now starting to show. If you look in the mirror, you will notice a little bulge in the lower abdomen. Now keep in mind, 
that everybody is different. So if this is your first pregnancy, you might not start to show for a few more weeks. If this is your second or your third pregnancy, you may very well already be starting to show now. Now this is my fourth pregnancy and I was definitely showing more at 10 weeks than I was with my first pregnancy. So don't be concerned if your belly doesn't look like you think it should or that those nosy old ladies at the grocery store think they should. Talk to your doctor if you're concerned about anything. Now on that note, if you haven't called your OB for your first OB appointment yet, I highly recommend that you do that now. And I talked a lot about what to expect at your first OB appointment on my week six video, so definitely check that out. But I wanna talk about something that if your OB hasn't already talked to you about, they will probably talk to you with your next appointment. And that is testing that you can do in your first trimester to check for certain abnormalities. Now this kind of testing is completely optional. You don't have to feel like you have to do this, but it's important to know what the options are so you can decide for yourself if it's something that you wanna do. Somewhere in the 10th to 13th week, with a combination of an ultrasound measurement of the back of the baby's neck called nuchal translucency, along with blood work, they can help determine your risk of having a baby with something like Down syndrome or trisomy 19 or spina bifida. There is also a test you can do in your second trimester as well, and we'll be talking about that in a few weeks. So be sure to hit the notification bell so you won't miss that video too. You are going to continue to notice changes in your body. You'll start to see uh, bluish veins popping up on your breasts and even on your abdomen. Your body is increasing its blood flow to account for the increased amount of blood you need to help nourish your little one. Your breasts have probably already started to get bigger and the dark area around your nipple called the areola is getting darker too. As your pregnancy progresses, you might even notice that the veins in your hands and feet get bigger. Your feet themselves might even get a little bigger and sometimes they don't shrink after the baby is born. So don't be surprised if you find that you have to buy a half a shoe size up from now on. Your body is amazing as it's preparing for this pregnancy. Now I talked about this earlier, but while your uterus is twice the size as it normally is, it's still a little too early to need to buy maternity pants. Your uterus is now above the symphysis bone. Last week I showed you how you can already fill your uterus. It's still pretty small, but it is possible to fill it. Check out that video if you wanna see that. But one cool thing is that you will notice that as you go to your OB visit each month, your OB might get out a measuring tape from time to time and measure your uterus. They usually measure from the symphysis pubis, which is like your pubic bone, to the top of the uterus. They measure it in centimeters, and the cool thing is, however many centimeters you measure is usually the same number of weeks you are, give or take a centimeter or two. So if your uterus is 16 centimeters, you are probably around 16 weeks along. Cool, huh? So let's talk about morning sickness. If you haven't felt it by now, you might be one of the lucky 10 to 20 percent of women who don't get it at all but for everyone else never fear for most women it's gonna go away within the next few weeks if your morning sickness is bad be sure to keep snacks by you at all times because nausea is worse on an empty stomach also be sure to drink lots of fluids but don't try to guzzle it just take small frequent sips throughout the day I love to keep peppermint candy on hand or even peppermint gum in the evenings and mornings try ginger tea that's safe for pregnancy because it's just an herbal tea Preggy pop are also awesome. They soothe morning sickness and they are convenient to carry around and you can just pop them in your mouth whenever you feel a wave of morning sickness. But the reason I like them most is because they contain vitamin B6. This has been well proven to help reduce the symptoms of morning sickness. Now I'll link them in the video description below so you can go check them out. But you can also just purchase vitamin B6 alone as a supplement too. Another supplement you can use, either alone or with vitamin B6, is called Unisom. This is found in the pharmacy in the over-to-the-counter section where you find sleep aids, but read the label carefully because there are two different kinds of Unisoms. Don't purchase the Unisom with the generic name Diphenhydramine. That's just Benadryl. The Unisom that helps with morning sickness is called Doxylamine, but I recommend that you talk to your OB if you wanna take these. There are a few prescription medications that you could take like promethazine or Zofran, but you'll need to talk to your OB and get a prescription for those. If you have vomiting that you can't control, even with the prescription medication, you need to talk to your OB. You might have something called hyperemesis gravidarum, which basically means vomiting during your pregnancy that you can't get under control with prescription medications. The dangerous thing is you can really become dehydrated. So if you can't keep anything down, even with medication, make sure to talk to your OB. But for most women though, this is not the case. And morning sickness in in general will go away by the end of the first trimester. So by the end of your 12th or 13th week, so hang in there, it should go away soon. 
Now it's time for your tip of the week. Now I've already mentioned taking your prenatal vitamin every day, drink plenty of fluids, get enough fiber or sunblock, the tip for this week is get enough vitamin D. It's not uncommon to be a little bit low in vitamin D, but your little one is developing her teeth right now, and vitamin D is important for strong teeth and for preventing cavities. So eat foods like fatty fish, eggs, fortified dairy products, and orange juice. These are all high in vitamin D, and talk to your doctor about if you should take a vitamin D supplement. And lastly, I just want to remind you that this video is intended for educational purposes, and it's not intended to diagnose or treat you, so if you have any questions, make sure you talk to your OB. In the first trimester, you should be seeing your OB every month, so make sure to go to all your appointments. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of week 11 video. When that comes up, click on that, and we will see you over there.